My name's Rindy and welcome to the Defense Saga series. In this series, you guessed it, I'm a defense peer. But not just any defense peer, I'm a hardcore Iron Man defense peer, meaning the only combat stat I'm training is defense. But I want to get a lot of PVM goals as well as completionist tasks out of the way on this account, things you would otherwise think to be impossible. So we're overcoming a lot of obstacles, including that of trying to get 43 strength bonus for an end goal of a fire cape. Once I get this fire cape, I can then enter the Tishar city as well and get obsidian armor. There's all kinds of cool and unique things I can get on this account, and they're all going to be extremely hard and tedious to achieve. But that's why we're here today, because I'm a masochistic psycho. We're going to be spending over 1,000 hours multi-logging on over 5 accounts for an upgrade of 1 strength bonus. But first, a word from today's sponsor. Empires and Puzzles is an exciting, award-winning free-to-play match 3 puzzle RPG game. It's one of the first of its kind to combine two popular genres being match 3 puzzles and role-playing games. So being that unique genre of match 3 RPG, this means you simply need to match shields of the same color to attack. The more you match, the stronger the attacks. This is an easy game to pick up, but very hard to master. Being a role-playing game, the game follows the story of a kingdom in need of saving from enemies of the realm. Travel to faraway lands such as the mystical seas of Atlantis, or even face the realm of the gods in Valhalla. There's over 400 collectible heroes available based around unique different elements, and every month unique heroes are introduced. Of course there's also a PvP option in this game, so you can go toe to toe with other players and join an alliance and raid other alliances in this PvP. Right now, Empires and Puzzles is celebrating its 6th birthday. This means there's tons of in-game events and new challenges. To commemorate this, they're also introducing a new feature to the game called the Museum. In the Museum, you're able to look at all the heroes you've collected along your journey, keep track of your leveled max heroes, and even see how many you're missing to complete your entire collection. So what are you waiting for? You can download Empires and Puzzles today on the App Store and Google Play or use my link in the description below. Once again, thank you to Empires and Puzzles for sponsoring today's video. So back on the topic of trying to complete a nearly impossible goal consisting of over 1,000 hours for a singular strength bonus. This one strength bonus comes between the difference of a KP Iron Spear versus a Bone Dagger P++ with a Dragon Fire Shield. But this one strength bonus is completely necessary in order for me to hit twos with a poison weapon on this account and twos will allow us to take on the fight caves challenge with 33% more accuracy and hitting twos on this account with a poison weapon is a big deal, especially unpotted. This is the only path to the 43 strength bonus, not including some other items I'll have to get down the line that are even probably worse than this. Now there were other paths originally, this is actually the second rendition of this account, Jagex banned the first one for one of these paths I went down. I actually was able to get a strength boost and get an iron hosta from barbarian training which would have been more than enough with just an obsidian shield for strength bonus on this account and I could have avoided a lot of the long grinds including the far-fetched dream of getting a fermenic kilt on this account for another one strength bonus upgrade. Speaking once again on the importance of strength bonus a lot of our last few episodes included just that me getting more strength bonus for this 43 strength bonus goal. I had just acquired manacles back in April of 2021, as well as a strength enemy trimmed after doing thousands of eclectics and acquiring hundreds of medium clues. It took me over 400 medium clue completions to get the manacles and the strength amulet trimmed, but it was well worth it because once again, it's the only route we have in getting that 43 strength bonus goal. As well, I had to drop a lot of the medium clues along the way because this account can't complete a lot of steps, it can't do a lot of quests for the steps. As well, I completed some rare and otherwise unachievable quests which we can now no longer do as Jagex fixed these, but these will be good for transportation. Also, this account has more Tanya access, which is going to lend us a hand later into Barrows and possibly getting more defense bonus, as some of the waves inside the fight caves will require a lot of tanking and conservation of food. So basically for the next few videos in the series, expect more strength bonus and more defense bonus, as well as some skilling goals and long stat grinds I'll have to do along the way to maxing out this account and achieving every possible goal I can. So back to present day, or should I say, 10 months ago. The moral of today's story is, new obstacles require new solutions, which also give our account more style. We no longer have access to the old account that had it easy, that had a region bracelet and a hosta. We now have one route to go for the 43 strength bonus, and this route is going to be a long and tedious one. As you'll see, just a piece of this route being completed today took me literally 10 months total. So without further ado, this is how I began my 10 month journey into actually acquiring the DFS 
and finally getting that plus one strength bonus and some amazing style points along the way being the only Iron Man defense peer with this shield. So I can't just go in and get the shield. This is going to take a lot of planning and, of course, preparation. Um, but before we prepare, we need to know what we're preparing for. And when I say what we're preparing for, I mean which dragon are we going to kill, what's going to be the method, what supplies do we need. When I say what dragon do we need to kill, I mean dragons drop visages, and visages make dragon fire shields, which is what we want. But what dragon is the best? What dragon has the lowest HP, the lowest defense, the highest drop rate, the best ratio to kill, possibly one that's in multi-combat versus single combat so I can kill multiple at once? What are the factors here and what do I need? So my original gangster plan was to actually go ahead and use a Venom Alt method where I hit an NPC for a 1, let it regen back to full HP before the Venom ticks down, and then I can actually try and stab these NPCs for a 1 before they die to the Venom. This would grant my Iron Man the kill count because the NPC's HP goes back up to full before the Venom actually ticks down. But I would need a way to make sure or guarantee that this HP bar would go back to full on a very frequent basis because there's no way to determinately know HP bar's regeneration rates on NPCs. There's no global timer. It's just completely and utterly random. You can't really determine it, but one thing that is in our control is we can control whenever Venom ticks down. If you let an NPC die to Venom or Poison, the next cycle on the new respawn of that NPC will then reset. Meaning if I do Venom the NPC, it's going to be a total 20 second cooldown before that Venom actually starts to tick down versus the ability to have Venom tick down instantly if you were to kill it right before the Venom was to tick off on that NPC. This meant I could pre-render a kill on the main and let the Venom be the last tick of damage on the NPC. This would mitigate some of the RNG, bringing it down to around a 33% chance that the NPC heals back to full on a normal NPC before the Venom ticks down. That's because we have 20 seconds before the Venom ticks down, and the HP can go up anywhere between 1 and 60 seconds from the start of the 1 damage which triggered the Venom. So the best case scenario here is, what if we found a dragon that heals at a more than normal rate of being once every 60 seconds? What if we found a dragon that, say, heals every 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, or even 40 seconds? Well, there's actually several dragons that do this. Black dragons in the wilderness do this, but I really don't want to bring my hardcore out to the wilderness, even though a visage from a black dragon in the wilderness is a 1 in 5,000 rate, whereas anywhere else, practically, a visage is a 1 in 10,000 rate. As well, a multi-combat area would be great, because that meant I could venom multiple NPCs at once on the main, and then go and attempt to stab multiple of these NPCs on the Iron Man defense pier for a 1 damage, even though it was very hard to hit a 1 with, say, 0 stats. Surprisingly, I did find out that almost all dragons do heal at this rapid HP regeneration rate, and that is 4 times a minute. This is great because as long as I hit a 1 in order to trigger the Venom at 100% chance, then I'll be able to have this dragon go back up to full HP before the Venom starts to tick down, as long as I prep the kill with a Venom Splat the first time. So the best dragon for this that I found in Multi, because Multi seems to be a very determining factor here, was that of Iron Dragons. Now I could do Steel Dragons, but they have higher defense, higher HP, all of that. And Iron Dragons do have higher defense and higher HP than many, many NPCs, even compared to their normal form, but the Catacombs offering the multi-combat choice here was just an easy choice for me, because that meant I could kill multiple dragons at once, possibly. And when I say possibly, that is, if I'm able to hit a 1 on that dragon. An account needs to hit a true damage 1 in order to get the kill count and items from a monster. I would need a lot of attack bonus as well as possibly supersets to hit a 1 on that dragon, because we're looking at trying to hit an NPC with 185 defense as well as extra defensive stats. So this hit chance goes up greatly if I was to use a super attack pot as well as a normal strength potion or even super strength potion. As long as I'm over 2 strength, the possibility of hitting 2s like I've mentioned many times in this series ups my damage accuracy roll a lot because instead of just being able to hit a 0 or a 1, I can now hit a 0, 1 or 2. 
so preparation, preparation. Back to preparation. What do I need the most right now? Supersets. What's going to get me that? Well, the only real way to get that is going to be through farming and farming contracts. And boy, oh boy, have we had to do a lot of farming on this account. I would have to do farming contracts at least daily just to get the seeds to plant and get quarms as well as irits in order to make those super sets. Or I could even use Taroman and just get normal strength pots. This worked as well, although I would need a lot more of those. But all of this is going to be achieved through the farming contracts. Luckily for me, I already needed Herblore for a Weapon Poison plus plus. For the Bone Dagger plus plus, I would be pairing with the DFS. And no, once again, I'm not going out to Deep Wilderness to kill Chaos Ellie at a chance of a Weapon Poison plus plus because I'm a hardcore and I'm a pansy bitch. I would literally rather get 82 Herblore as well, that meant I could actually make brews which I'll need for a lot of tasks down the line that you'll see in future episodes. So these urban allotment runs for these supersets and for Herblore XP to poison my bone dagger really would not be that bad if it wasn't for the lack of transportation on this account and the weird means I have to take from one city to the next. And when I say weird transportation, I mean it takes me about 30 to 40 minutes to complete an entire herb run on this account, just running around the entire map of Gilinor. So, hmm, maybe I did need some forms of better transportation that could maybe cut this farm run down by a whole five minutes. This five minutes multiplied by 200 something days was a lot of time, and I decided, let's go ahead and get a mounted Xerix Talisman. Knock them suckers out, you son of a bitch. Now, I really couldn't kill Lizardmen Shamans, so that led us to the Stone Chest, which were a very rare rate of pulling Lizard Fangs or an inert Xerix Talisman, which you could convert to more Lizard Fangs. And let's just say I spent 20 hours here, and I went all the way from my 60 something thieving to 84, just attempting to loot over 5,000 fangs from this chest, which is the requirement for mounting that talisman on my wall. But I also needed the Xerix talisman for one more thing, using the heart teleport to put me right next to the entrance of the catacombs, as I would be coming back to those on a very frequent basis in order to kill the iron dragons, which I'll be spending a lot of time at. I had finally acquired all the fangs and an inert talisman to put on my wall, but there was one problem. I would need 67 plus 5 construction in order to mount this thing, and I wasn't quite there. I had a lot of planks from catching eclectics thousands of times over, but even those weren't enough to get me 67 construction. So what did I do? I went woodcutting. I cut some oak logs, turned them into planks, and used the balloon transport method I earlier got from Enlightened Journey in order to bank these planks, later use them to make oak larders, and then finally put that talisman on my wall. So here we are 25 hours into the grind of just preparing to kill dragons and still something felt empty. I now had construction and new transport methods inside my POH, but I did not have a way to get more run energy. Currently I was running from the air talisman teleport on the elemental ring all the way to my Remington POH and that cost me a lot of run energy. By the time I would get to my POH I'd be down about 40 run energy and this wasn't very satisfying. So what did I do? I decided I needed a stamina pool. But this meant I would also need stamina potions. How would I get those on this account? Luckily, once again, like I said earlier, we have Mortania access, so we can actually access Theater of Blood. I gathered a team of friends at Theater of Blood, they boosted me through the first room, which was still a bit risky. I just had to make sure I didn't hit any of the blood splatters while walking across the back wall, or else I could easily die on this hardcore Iron Man. But as long as I walked the back wall here and avoided most of the damage, I should be fine. Don't worry, Wendy. I'll protect you from all these scary monsters. The next room being the bloat, I could just entirely ignore and sit in the corner outside of the room. Finally, after the bloat was completed, I could then go to the supply chest and grab some staminas, as well as possibly even some brews, which I would need for later on in further episodes. 
This required many trips through Theater of Blood and many attempts at walking the back wall to avoid the blood splatters. But we did it, we got the 10 staminas we needed for the pool, we once again got a spicy stew boost, and now we had more run energy, which greatly helped with the amount of farm runs I would need to be doing for herb lore and supersets as well as just navigating the map for clues and anything else I would need in the future. Speaking of farm runs, I want to emphasize the point that these are awful and the routes I take to each patch are awful. Here's how I actually managed to do a farm run and why it took me so long. That's a lot of farming you gotta do there, partner. I wish I could lend you a hand, but sadly, you're an Iron Man. Holy smokes, now that's a tree monarch right there. As you can see, the worst part was getting to the farming guild. I had to go to the air altar, to my POH, use the Xerix talisman to Hesidius, take a minecart to the middle area near raids 1, then take the travel guide, then take a boat, then run all the way through a poison swamp in order to get to the farming guild. This made me really reconsider some things and I decided to even finally do some tree runs, making my farm runs longer but in the hopes of possibly getting 99 farming one day for that farming cape so I could teleport straight to the farming guild. And this was all because no, I can't enchant a skills necklace, I have one magic on this account, and I can't use fairy rings because the quest line gives prayer XP as well as attack XP, which I'm keeping at one of course. I also decided during this time to get 75 wood cutting through two ticking teaks in order to get magic logs. One for birdhouse runs which I would use bird nest for in order to make serotonin brews later down the line, and two because I needed magic logs in order to use the air balloon transport method to the grand tree, where two tree patches currently resided, being very close to one another. Now we have some potions in the bank, a teleport near dragons, some run energy when we need it, but there's one more thing I need before I can actually prepare my long fight against the iron dragons for the visage drop. I would need a swift blade. Yes, I would have to go back to last man standing, which I absolutely hate, to get a lot of last man standing points which took me around 20 hours because I am terrible at PvP, mind you. I needed this Swift Blade because it had a stab attack style, and dragons are weak to stab. It's also got a 3 tick attack speed versus all of my other weaponry which has a 4 tick attack speed, and I can still hit 2s instead of 1s as long as I'm 3 plus strength potted, which I will be pretty much during this entire grind of dragons. Using the Swift Blade almost doubles my chances because it's a 3 tick weapon instead of a 4 tick weapon, and it uses the stab attack style, so this is an absolute must. So here we are, almost 50 hours into preparation, we've gotten our swift blade, we've gotten our potions, we've gotten everything we need, except we will still have to do some farm runs along the way. Let's go ahead and finally get this shield. If only just getting the shield was that easy, because it was not, trust me. There were a lot of pitfalls even along the way, and of what I thought would be a perfect method. The original idea once again was to go to Iron Dragons multi-combat. I would sit in a safe spot near the dragons but still in their aggression zone for 10 minutes to de-aggress the dragons, so my main accounts always took aggro. And from here I would kill the dragons one time, allow the venom to kill the dragons for the last hit, have them respawn then hit them once again for a 1 hopefully, in order to then have the dragon heal back up to full HP after the 1, so it's been 15 seconds, it should be another 5 seconds and then the venom starts to tick down after the healing of the dragon. Therefore now we can hit our 1 true damage, or at least attempt to, on our hardcore Iron Man defense spear in order to get that kill credit of the iron dragon and possibly that 1 in 10,000 chance at the draconic visage. There was a problem with this. I decided to use Airstrike with a Toxic Trident as well as a Serpentine Helm, and that would allow a 100% Venom chance, so I would always hit a Venom, but I could hit a 1 or a 2 with Airstrike, and Dragons were super weak to Mage. So the chance was just as equal of me hitting a 2 as a 1, 
and a 2 would entirely scuff the kill, giving the kill credit to my main and even the drop. Now I could use bronze darts and bring a lot of brews and sit there forever and bank millions of times in order to make my range 1 and hope that I would hit an iron dragon for a 1, but that just really wasn't worth the time. It was more so worth it just to bring magic, hit the 1 or 2 as soon as I could, and if I got a 2, just sacrifice the kill to the main. If I got a 1, go in for the kill credit on the Iron Man by then trying to poke it to death. But I realized there was going to be a problem with this. My main was getting more drops than my defense peer. I was getting the drops first on my main for even just dragon legs and plate skirt, which I wanted on my defense peer. Now imagine how angry I would be if I got a visage on my main, which is just as much of a chance at this rate as getting one on my defense peer. So I needed to switch up the plan a bit and the style of how I'm going to be killing these dragons. So I decided I would need a slightly new method to guarantee I don't get really any more kills on these mains, or at least not a lot of kills. This new method would require me to build entirely new accounts and invest nearly another 100 hours just into the preparation of this project. The new accounts I wanted to build were going to be 75 attack, 75 defense, 1 strength. These accounts would be using serpentine helms with poison daggers and 42 strength bonus, not 43, so they would be guaranteed to hit a 1. Now using a poison weapon with a serpentine helm is only a 50% chance at venom, but if it didn't venom, the worst thing that would happen is the iron dragon would just heal back up to full HP, and then I would just try and hit another 1 and re-venom it. It'd be a 50% chance for every 1 this account build would hit. So, to make these accounts, I spent a lot of time at Sand Crabs, getting 6k attack XP per hour with 1 strength, maxing this out with super combats. I also got 10k defense XP per hour on these accounts by using long range. I made two of these accounts as I would be occupying two separate worlds, as I would be hopping between two worlds in case I got extremely lucky and hit two ones on two dragons and needed more dragons to hit in the spare time rather than just sitting there like a mindless idiot. So after a few weeks of training the accounts to 75 attack, 75 defense with one strength, we were finally here with the new method, and I would not be getting nearly as many kills on my main, but this meant I would be logging into literally five accounts at once. Two alts that use vulnerability that hold the aggro, two alts with one strength that would be hitting the ones in each world in order to actually venom damage these NPCs, and then finally my Iron Man on the top which would be trying to do the final damage with a swift blade. So this is how the pentalog method looked, and I would be doing this for roughly over 1000 hours. For the next roughly 10 months of my life, this is almost where all of my time went, besides putting some edits in for some rare videos you'd see on my channel every now and then. During these edits, I would actually go ahead and go back to Monks and train my combat up and AFK there, because I was getting around 2-3k defense XP per hour, and eventually I would need 85 defense in order to hit 40 combat, to hit Soul Wars, and Vanica tasks for Slayer. So this was kind of my off task every now and then, along with the farm runs I would still be doing daily during these edits. Now working on my other series, I had wished I could still pentalog during those small times I would edit and record, but I couldn't. It just took so much focus, and going back to monks every time was just a more set in stone way of still training this account and giving it some progress during the other episodes of other series I was putting together. So I racked up days and days of playtime training my defense as well as my HP to 85 and 73. This put us at 40 combat so now we can get Vanica task, get better Slayer points for Slayer Rings, and go to Soul Wars for better XP. As well, during the grind of doing dragons I managed to get 98 farming and 80 herb lore. So before I was even able to get that shield drop, I went ahead and got the Bone Dagger P++ as I was able to make the Weapon Poison++ through an Herb Lore boost. This also meant I would have to do the Lost Tribe quest and buy some Bone Daggers to in fact use this Weapon Poison on, and now we were just missing the shield.
Another side quest I took on was trying to complete a singular hard clue. I spent many, many months trying to complete one clue. Now every time I got a Ceridoman wizard, these at the time were not poisonable and I had to recoil them and possibly use bruise to kill them, and hard clues weren't my first priority. The only thing I could get from these that's very rare is third age, and that would be a good tank piece of gear. But I'm not going to risk my hardcore in the wilderness or try and waste some bruise and recoils to get these clues done, so I would have to drop these clues during a lot of steps. A lot of steps I just couldn't complete as well due to quests I could not complete, as well as areas of the map I just couldn't even get to. Last step, Rendy, X marks the spot. You know what that means? Go dig that sucker up. Out of the 59 hard clues I got from Iron Dragons, I could only complete two of them, and almost didn't complete any at all until I hit about the 50th clue scroll. But yes, we finally did complete these, and I did get one cool unique being an ancient kite shield. I had wished from the beginning of this grind that I could possibly share this with you and show you what I was doing for 10 months, but I really couldn't because I risked one, Jagex patching this method kind of like they did with Limpwort series and Calphite Queen, where even though he was working his ass off to get a drop in a really unconventional way, they decided it wasn't in the best interest of the game mode and kind of nerfed it around. I was very, you know, worried this would happen to me, but surprisingly it did not and I kept it on the down low as much as I could. As well, I wanted to avoid any crashers, say if I was streaming, who would come and just ruin my Iron Man's KC, because there's only so many worlds and only so many dragons. There's literally two Iron Dragons per world. When I was not making a video actively or editing actively, I would be back at Dragons and treating this like a 9 to 5. I would wake up every morning, go do my farm run, then go to dragons until I got roughly 100 KC a day, and that's on a very good day. Some days I could only get like 50 KC or less. It was very sporadic, and the hourly rate I would say was around 10 to 12 dragons per hour. And sometimes I would get 20 dragon kills, sometimes I would get 3 dragon kills per hour. It was very random. Zero, 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 zero. Come on, you stupid bastard. Can't you hit something better than a zero already? Every now and then my one strength alts would hit two ones back to back and scuff the kill, as well sometimes I would just take the kills from people trying to crash me on my toxic trident accounts that would throw the vulnerability. I also used this to just reset dragon's venom at the times they needed to be reset. This ended up in me taking around 1000 KC across all four of these accounts, but that would not even be anything compared to what the hardcore Iron Man would be getting. And if I got the visage in that 1000 KC on one of these alt accounts, I would have still been very, very upset. So at first everything seemed to go swimmingly. I had the method down packed, I was doing this all in secret, I was getting kill count, but you know, then I realized I'm going for an item that's 1 in 10,000 KC. If I even go double dry on the drop rate, 
So that could be another year tacked on to the amount of time I'm actually going for this visage. I got a little frustrated after a few months because it was really cutting into the time I could put into other videos on my channel, and it was really just a giant burden on myself and my channel to try and get this drop, but I had to persevere. I literally had no other route to get the strength bonus I would need for the fight caves and for this account. I even got so fed up at one point, I was messing around with the Halloween event. Yeah, we're now at Halloween from April. I tried finding a way into the Warriors Guild using the little trick or treat with a spider, hoping it would be a force movement through a wall. Unfortunately, it was not. I can't get into the Warriors Guild normally, even at 99 defense, because it's either 99 attack or 99 strength, or a combination of 130 between the two that allows you inside of the guild. My account will never get in there. I just need to get past that one tile to get into the Warriors Guild and possibly get a Dragon Defender. And yes, for some reason, the Dragon Defender is the only defender that does not have an attack rec. It only has the 60 defense rec, meaning if I could somehow get in there, I could wield it. And even though I could see in there, there was no way in. My RuneScape manips were not working, but what about IRL manips? Well, around the same time, Halloween, I had my friend Mahler come and visit for a good week. We went to the old witch store, which I've shown in previous videos, as you can see in my Dead Only Hardcore Iron Man, and I spoke to the witch once again. I asked if there could be anything in real life that could manipulate my chance of luck or this drop rate, and they had just the thing, apparently. That was a luck candle. They told me and instructed me that I should put my desires on a piece of paper under the candle, draw them, write them in every way, shape, or form I can, light the candle, and try and manifest the thought into the candle. And no, it didn't work. I burnt the whole candle. Nothing was happening. I feel like I was scammed at this point and lied to, but I couldn't do anything about it. I wasted $25 and a lot of good lighter fluid. I also went to one of those wishful thinking conventions or events or whatever you call it, where you put trash in the water with something written on it and you just put your wishes and dreams out into the lake or the ocean. I got married and I bought a house like I wished on the paper, but the visage, that part just never came. So nothing I was doing in real life seemed to affect the RNG or luck at all inside of this goal. I would just have to bite the bullet sit down in my 9 to 5 job of killing dragons while on 5 accounts at once, and hope that I got that drop. And here I was for months and months. It was a true testament of how far I was willing to go in a fucking video game. Even my loot tracker on RuneLite wasn't able to keep up with me doing this insane task. I was hopping back to worlds after I would hit the 1, and sometimes I would hop over so late as the dragon animation was dying, I would still get the items in the kill credit, but the loot tracker wouldn't count it. Therefore, I probably had an extra around 1,000 kill count whenever I actually got the drop. Also, there was tens of thousands of dragons I just could never hit on. They died to Venom, I never hit the one on them, and then I never got the kill credit and I never got the item drop. This was actually the majority of the dragons, and as well there were even some I did hit on where I did not get the item drop because the world hop is so slow now due to Jagex's terrible servers, that I could not world hop back in time before the dragon died. I have to get back to the world before the death animation completes in order to actually solidify that drop on my drop table and acquire the item. But despite all of the obstacles, we overcame the impossible. And here's all the rare drops I got along the way. If I didn't get the drop I wanted here today, well, you might not have seen this video for another one year, two years, or even three years down the road. Yes, 
That's 5k KC, halfway to the 1 in 10k drop rate of the Vissy, and I gotta go move houses now. Now this would be really cool if I didn't already have one of these in my bank on my street box. I hit you with that bad space, you ain't coming back. No control or delete you, give me space, sight tag. I wore my lucky black G skirt, and we've gotten dragon plate legs and dragon plate skirt in one inventory, but no visage. Here it is, 10,000 kill count, that means we're officially gonna go dry our next KC, and that's unfortunate because once again we're wearing lucky skirts, we're wearing a lucky pink skirt, hopefully it'll actually give us the luck we need, because I need this badly. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! After 10 months of logging into 5 accounts on and off at a time, killing 10 dragons an hour, I finally got it. And what's even better, I'm the first Iron Man defense peer with this thing. This is the final KC according to Loot Tracker, 10,300. Now that's around 1,000 off due to the world hop issue I was talking about earlier. So that's 11,300 plus maybe 1,000 on the alts here from KC. And that's going to put us at about 12,300 KC in total for the visage drop. Just a little bit over rate, honestly not terrible. I could have gone two times dry and it would have been another year till he saw this video once again. So I'm satisfied. Here's all the loot. And speaking of loot, we need to sell a lot of this loot. But can I even make the shield? Um, I forgot to really look into this and Wiki's not always correct. I went to Oziak first. The Wiki says you do need Dragon Slayer to have him make it for you. I can't do Dragon Slayer on this account because it gives strength XP. And come to find out the wiki was correct here, I couldn't talk to him. Now the wiki says you can smith this shield at 90 smithing without the quest complete, but the wiki has been wrong for many things, and to be honest, who has ever gotten a visage and tried to smith it without Dragon Slayer completed first? Much less, who has ever gotten a visage at like 40 combat? So we're putting all our eggs in one basket and just hoping the wiki is correct. Because I didn't even think this over and we just spent 10 months here. Luckily, we got a lot of algables from Iron Dragons and I was able to sell a lot of these to Rogue's Den for high alc value or a little bit lower because I didn't want to world hop literally hundreds of thousands of times. So we ended up with about 16 mil. I was able to buy some gold ore from Blast Furnace here and make some gold bars, although costly, they're going to be great XP at Blast Furnace and now we need 85 smithing plus a 5 stew boost in order to make that DFS from the Vissi. Now this was only around 100k XP per hour because I cannot get gold smithing gauntlets. I actually cannot do this quest because it requires magic, which really limits my smithing XP here. The plan was to go ahead and buy gold ore for a bit, smith it, then use this shared shop I found where you can sell gold bars between a main and an iron man practically to sell the gold bars for top value and make almost all of my money back from goldsmithing which is pretty unheard of without even having to craft the gold bars into bracelets. But I figured maybe someday down the road I'll need these gold bars say for crafting or something and I really don't want to just drop a mass amount of these on my other account as well selling them to a main is kind of cheese let's be honest. As well I had to get ice gloves because all of these smithing methods require ice gloves. This wasn't that bad except it took me 35 minutes to kill this bitch. So these ice gloves are useful because now I can actually do blast furnace quicker. I got 69 smithing here with the gold ore and then proceeded to make addy bars and that's from 1700 addy ore that I don't even know where it came from.
So I made those Addy bars boosting my smithing by one with Dwarven stats, as well as made some Mithril bars. Here I had around 2,000 of each bar, and I would use these both along with my now acquired 70 smithing from just making these bars in order to go to Giant's Foundry and do the best method there at 70 smithing, being half and half Addy and Mithril bars. So yet another grind. I spent another 10 to 12 hours here in order to go from 70 to 86 smithing. Yeah, 86 smithing, not 85, because I decided to buy a grog here for a plus 4 boost rather than waiting around for a plus 5 boost from a stew. It was just more practical to get one singular level. I was also able to get some more GP back from this minigame as well as get the entire smithing outfit along with the combination for the ice gloves. So after around 20 total hours of smithing, it was time for the moment of truth. Was my 86 plus 4 smithing enough to make the DFS, or did I need Dragon Slayer 1 fully completed? No Dragon Slayer 1 requirement needed. I am now the first Iron Man defense peer, much less hardcore Iron Man defense peer, to have not only a Visage drop, but a Dragon Fire shield. A massive plus 7 strength bonus shield with tons of defense bonus to it. Although we only upgraded one strength bonus from the Iron KP spear, we've got a lot of style in this shield and a lot of defense bonus. I hope to see you all in around a month on the next episode of the Defense Saga, where we'll be taking on our hardest opponent yet, maybe not our most time consuming, but it's going to be quite a bit risky. We're getting closer to our strength bonus goals, and this series, maybe one day, will actually conclude with the Fight Cave Challenge. And lastly, some quick shoutouts. First to DTA Tattoo on Instagram for the new channel logo, second to the Scold for commissioning all of these animations you saw in today's video, and lastly to all of you. Thank you so much as well to my Patreon supporters. I'll see you next time.